Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Roundtable, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing the J drama series, Minato's Laundromat. This is a BL. It aired on Gaga Ulala, and it also aired on Vicky Rukatan. I would recommend Vicky Rukatan over Gaga Ulala because the translation is a little bit better, personally, I think. But this is the story of Minato, who has moved back to his hometown from Tokyo because he basically had a work mental breakdown when he was working in an office. And he's now like almost 30. I think he's 20, 28, I don't know. Anyway, he's close to 30. And he thinks because he's almost 30 that he's old. I, I find this highly entertaining, but for some reason in J-dramas, if someone's almost 30, they're, they're ancient. I'm going, given the fact that a lot of my friends in high school were in their 90s, I don't think of 30 as being that old. And in Hobbit years, you're just an adult and able to make mature decisions at 30. Wow. Okay. But anyway, moving on. So, Minato is almost 30. He has moved back to run his grandfather's laundromat. And one day he is in his laundromat, and this person comes in named Shin. And he's like, Oh, they look so nice. I'm not sure why Minato likes the way Shin likes. I mean, Shin looks nice. No offense, but I'm like, Shin, Shin. Okay. But anyway, so he's like, Oh, he looks nice. Well, then he finds out later on, even though Shin looks older, Shin is still a high school student, which means Shin is like 18 or 19 when he meets Minato at his laundromat. So Minato is friendly with Shin, but only like like a friend kind of thing. He's like, well, you, you want to read this comic? I got these mangas. Maybe you like them. And Shin and him like the same mangas. Um, Shin comes and does his laundry there because Shin lives in a big family and there's no time to do his laundry in the house, so he just comes to Minato's and does his laundry. Well, as time evolves, Minato finds out that Shin likes Minato, and Minato's like, no, you cannot like me. I am ancient. I am old. I'm decrepit. I'm like, you're like less than, I think you're like a decade apart. I think he was 28 and 18. But I'm like, you know, there is, uh, if you wait two years, it would be better. But anyway, no offense, I'm just like, really, you don't want to date someone in high school. So, anyway, but, um, Minato was like, no, I don't like you now. And she was like, well, I, I really like you. Um, and he's kind of like, Shin's like this big puppy dog who's a little more reserved than a regular puppy dog. I'm thinking like a Japanese version of when Pat in Bad Buddy gets excited. Take that and Divide it by four, and you've got a quarter of that with Shen when he's excited. So anyway, Shen tries to woo Minato. Minato says, no, I will not be wooed. You're too young. Go to your studies. So anyway, and at the same time, Minato runs into his old teacher, which I I really don't mean it weird, but I don't understand why in J-dramas, usually the main character has this weird crush on their teacher. I, I, mean, I mean, no offense at all, but I'm going, what is with the senpai attraction? I mean, no offense, I'm going, the teachers are usually kind of boring, and this one is really absent-minded, and I'm not quite sure what Minato saw in them, but, you know, it, it's Minato's deal, I, I guess. But anyway, so Minato's senpai has come back to town and he's like, oh, my first love. I'm like, he wasn't your first love. He was like your first, um, I don't know, thing you thought about. So anyway, but that's debatable. So I'm not trying to rain on any parade about the senpai attraction thing here, but I just found it kind of weird. So anyway, so he kind of tries to see about if he and senpai can be together by the end of the day that does not work out because senpai really just isn't interested in minato in that way and i really think minato wasn't really interested in senpai in that way although he thought he was and so 
that's where that kind of stands. At the same time, um, Shin is the student of Simpai. And I think, you know, the the thing I find interesting about Shin is Shin's like, you know what, if you want to be with me, that's fine. But if you do want to be with Senpai Minato, then you really should make an effort to at least say what you want to say so you don't have regrets on that fact. I think, you know, the one thing that I liked about the character of Shin is he's willing to say the things that most people his age would, you know, keep buried down because they don't want to be embarrassed or rejected or any of that. And he's like, no, I'm going to say what I think. I'm going to tell this person I care about them. If they don't want to care about me, that's okay. But just so they know, I've said what I've said. And, you know, I really think that the other thing that's interesting is kind of like Bad Buddy and Plus and Minus, um, and also Fighting Mr. Second and Return of the Runner-Up. The thing that I like about these BL dramas is not really that they're BL dramas. I mean, that's irrelevant to me. But the thing that I find interesting is they are about people who one party is definitely demisexual, meaning they have one person. That person is their person. That's it. And for Shin, it's like, Minato is my person. If Minato doesn't want to be with me because, you know, it's going to be a while before I graduate college and we could have a life together and that freaks him out then that's okay but Minato is still my person it's kind of like the only other J drama I can think of that would be like this one is one where their roles are reversed no no they're not reversed I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong one anyway but the um series called a story to read on your first day in love about again I don't get the teacher thing but about the the teacher who like three years later ends up marrying the college student who she taught. But anyway, I cannot remember the name of the teacher or the college student in that one, but that was an interesting one, not because of the age gap, but because of, I found it interesting to see like in Japan culture, what people think of as old. I mean, no offense in going, they think of people in their thirties as like what we think of in the U.S., people in their 60s, which I found extremely fascinating as an American viewer watching a Japanese show. I mean, it just was interesting. Now, I will say that um, this series, I watched every episode that came out weekly, except for the last three, because by the, by the middle of the series, I was just a little bored and angsty with it to be honest because unlike I mean there are many likable things about Minato but he kind of is one of those undecided characters and I don't mean it weird but I'm one of those people that's like either say what you want to say or quit dilly-dallying and make up your darn mind and I think that's kind of because of my personality but I really did like the character of Shen but I was tired of having Shen, you know, sitting there trying to be a good sport about things. Either way, and having Minato sit there going, I don't know, if I like Senpai. And I can't like Shin because Shin is graduating high school. I'm sitting there going, you know, whether you like Shin or not is really irrelevant to me. But the fact that you cannot make up your mind on Senpai, who that that was aggravating to me. I mean, forget Shin for a moment. The whole senpai thing, I just found extremely annoying. And then, of course, there was that other kid who was Shin's frenemy, I think is what you call him, who liked senpai's nephew or cousin who ran the convenience store. Uh, that was just kind of weird, too. I mean, no offense, I'm going... That kid had no personality at all. I... I mean, I like architecture as much as the next person, but that kid was just weird. So between the frenemy who liked the architecture student, who was also liked by Shin's sister, which again, I'm sitting there going, what is with the teachers in Japan? I mean, no offense at all here. I'm just saying that was really weird. So by like the last three episodes, I was like, you know what? I'll wait till the final episode comes out, then I'll catch up the other two because I just don't have the time for this kind of angsty J drama vibe I'm getting off of this series. So I waited until the last episode, which aired last Wednesday. 
And I have to say, I did like the way the series ended. It was very pretty much calm. I loved how, though, at the end of the series, it was like um, Minato finally realized that Senpai and him were never going to be a couple. I think, you know, it's not really so much a reflection of what worked in relationships for Minato, but that he finally figured out that like what he had thought would work his whole entire life or what he had dreamed would work his entire life wasn't going to work at all and that that was the best for him because I think you know whether Minato ended up wishing or not was not really the point of the end of the drama. I think the point of the end of the drama was Minato finally got to a point in his life where he realized I know what I want in life. I know that I do not want to end up with Senpai because the only person that I really care about in this world is Shin. And yes, Shin needs to go and get his medical degree. And yes, Shin might need to go to Tokyo and work for a while. And yes, that will take some time, but that's just time. And you know, I think at the end of the day, that was what I liked about the end of the drama was that it really was about not really Shin figuring out his life, because I don't mean we're going, Shin kind of has his life figured out. I think he's kind of had his life figured out since he was 10 years old and was like, this is my person. And he's like, I'm going to go to school locally. I'm going to stay near Minato. Minato might not ever care for me, but that's okay. And, you know, I think that Shin, his life was led by decision, whereas Minato's life was, for a lot of it, led with indecision and somewhat regret. And I think it was really nice at the end of the series to have Minato get to a point in his life where he's like, I'm going to say what I want to say to the person who really matters to me, because I finally figured that out. And, you know, I think that it wasn't so much anything change around Minato, but that through his experiences and through his life, Minato changed. And I think that was kind of the, the whole point. Also, I really did like the music to this drama. I will say I, I didn't really get the intro. It's kind of like the senpai thing. I just don't get it. It's kind of a J drama intro, which for those of you who know J dramas, you know what I'm talking about. It's like they're trying to do like these weird cutesy things, and it's like I don't understand the weird cutesy things. Maybe it's we don't have that in K dramas or in Taiwanese dramas or in Thai dramas. So I really don't get it. But anyway, I guess we sometimes have it in Thai dramas. But um, I would give this series probably a seven out of ten it's one that i will probably go back i have not watched the middle the second and third to last episodes like i said i was going to because i've been a little busy with school and work but i would give it a seven out of ten i did like seeing the the actor who plays minato was in cherry magic as the um the friend of oh this name escaped me. Anyway, the co-worker and friend of the one guy in Cherry Magic. I cannot remember his name at the moment. I'm trying to remember it and it's escaping me. Okay, anyway, but for those of you who know um, Cherry Magic, you will know because this is the guy who his character ends up going and spending the night at the other character's house. And um, the... Oh, I wish I could remember their names. Anyway, I'm going to have to watch Cherry Magic again now. That's terrible. And they are making a new Cherry Magic, too. I think it's been released in Japan, but I'm still waiting for that to be released globally because I like other people want to see it. So anyway, but um, I would recommend the series if you like Japanese drama. Um, I will say that I watch mainly Thai and Taiwanese drama, so I'm not really into J-drama, and it's nothing against J-drama, it's just I don't really get some of the cultural aspects of J-drama with, like, the senpai thing, or the, because someone's almost 30, they're, like, retirement age and getting ready to drop into the grave, even though in Japan, most people live into their 90s, they have, like, the highest 
aging population in the world. So I'm like, according to that, he'd be alive like two times more that age for Minato. But anyway, so I don't really get that kind of mentality. Now, I will say like, I mainly teach Japanese students when I'm teaching English. And the thing I find interesting is most of my Japanese students don't like J-drama either. And it's for the same reasons I don't, which I find kind of interesting that if I teach a lot of Japanese students, I'm going, if a majority of the students I teach are any indication of the population of Japan, I would think they would be kind of changing up their drama to suit their population base. But who knows? But I would still say I like this one because I think, you know, in most um, like Western dramas, when someone who is significantly older marries someone who is significantly younger, it's always seen as a negative. But I will say that in my in my personal history of people who I've known who have been married, I would say that a lot of times it's not always a negative. Now I will say I do kind of find it a little weird that a high schooler would be dating like someone in their late. 20s to early 30s but again I think it would depend like if my kid came to me and said Anna did mom I'm thinking about dating someone who's 26 and I'm 19 I would sit there and go well it kind of depends on the 26 year old to me it's not really about their age it's about their character and why they would want to be with my kid who I am sure my kid would be utterly fabulous so the reasons they would want to be with my kid would be like so understandable but it would kind of depend on making sure that they weren't with my kid just because they were like you know six to ten years younger than them so anyway but I think you know really age is just a number and the thing is is I've known a couple of couples who they were with people who were quite a bit older or quite a bit younger than them but it was the perfect person for them so I really think it just depends on the situation and the character of the individuals. So anyway, that is my review of Minato's Laundry Mat. Again, you can check this out on Gaga Lola or um, Vicky Vukatan. They have all the episodes with English subtitles. I would give it seven overall. Now there's not a single part that you couldn't watch with the kitties. There are some parts where Shin is overly passionate as it were, but I will say that it's kind of the typical J-drama thing where it's like, you really don't even have to skip. I don't mean it bad. But anyway, so overall, I think the main thing I liked again is that Minato figured out his life. And that is my review. Check it at the round table. Bye.